hello everyone <coughs> today i'll be talking to you regarding two very very important topic of hematology <coughs> that is thalassemia and heredity spherocytosis okay so it will be a integrated approach covering every aspect of the two diseases and which are universally asked question throughout the world so all these sub specialties i'll be including when i discuss this important topics okay so we talk about question number one we you are getting a 32 year old greek man this is important who has recently married a woman from greek community that means a greek pers male is marrying a greek lady both from the greek also called greece also and both of they are aware of thalassemia well quite educated people they are and they also know that genetic heritage and they want to know about it of course they have come to you now which is the best statement regarding thalassemia so answer of this question is can occur because of imbalance in production of alpha or beta globin chain <clears throat> why this answer why not others so first we should know the basic concept friends if you are really want to go to top of the world in any exam throughout the world your basic concept should be very very clear so regarding definition of thalassemia it's a group of in group of disorder point to be noted it's not a single disease it's a inherited disorder well this genetically determined of hemoglobin synthesis okay so there are three keywords that you got to remember in this particular line now we extend our talk about hemoglobin synthesis so we know that we in the heme in hemoglobin we have a heme component and we have a globin component Glo broadly we classify hemoglobin into two categories so the problem of hemoglobin synthesis but what part synthesis of one or more globin chains the problem that means the problem is of globin chain so now that means we have narrowed down to our path pathology and pathophysiology the globin chain and it is a autosomal recessive disorder it has a special meaning i'll be talking in more detail little later on as of now if i have to tell you what are the keywords that you got to remember first keyword is group of disorder inherited disorder and inherited we got the answer right now they are type of autosomal recessive disorder hemoglobin synthesis and we got the answer is the globin chain synthesis so they are the few keywords with this background of very simple that hb is heme plus globin now again before i discuss more question let me discuss some basic concept of hemoglobin so so normal hemoglobin is there are two alpha and two beta chains i'm talking about globin chains in the hemoglobin so hba is a normal adult hemoglobin and that has two alpha and two beta and hba is around 95 to 97 percent of the total hemoglobin in the adult then we have a2 it is about one to uh, three 1.5 to 3.5 percent it has two alpha and two delta chains and in the adult we also have a hemoglobin f which have two alpha and two gamma chains so if you do the hemoglobin electrophoresis hemoglobin electrophoresis you look we get the normal person a a to f a a to f you can see the hba has the maximum share of 95 to 97 percent and it has about one to three or 1.5 to 3.5 percent this is less than one percent so you get this normal 
hemoglobin electrophoresis. Now, with this background, and we learned in the previous slide, the problem is in the, in the globin chain synthesis. So we have a so-called beta thalassemia. In beta thalassemia, there is a problem of beta chain synthesis. And point to be noted, the beta chain is there only in hemoglobin A. So now I don't need to tell to the illustrious student listening to me, the problem is in the beta chain synthesis, the HBA level will go down drastically. Obviously, the major shareholder is HBA, no beta chain, HBA level will go down. But to, to survive the body, to, of course, there is no HPA. The body will die very soon. The person will die very soon. The body try to compensate by making more and more A2 and more and more F. So if there is a beta thalassemia, then the, if you do hemoglobin electrophoresis, now what you will be getting is A, A2, F. A, A to F. You can find that A to or F level have increased. Look into, the, uh, they were very much reduced. So when the classical feature of beta thalassemia is raised level of hemoglobin F and A2 level is also increased. So this is the electrophoresis of a beta thalassemia where we find A level has gone down and A2 and F has increased. You can very well compare with these two previous uh, electrophoresis also, so we are clear about it. So raised level of HBF in the adult is one of the most diagnostic criteria of hemoglobin, uh, so-called beta thalassemia, right? Now we have one more variety of alpha thalassemia. Alpha thalassemia, again we look into this, we find alpha chain is there in all the three. Every hemoglobin, A, A to F has alpha. So now if the problem is in A, uh, so-called alpha chain, all these three level will be, all three will be reduced. About this I'll be talking in much more great detail later, later on. But as of now, you got the idea. What is thalassemia and what is the beta thalassemia and what is alpha thalassemia? Okay, so little bit more physiology. Okay, without which you will not understand. We all know if you t talk about basic structure of the hemoglobin, hemoglobin is a tetramer, okay? And it has got four tetramer, one, and as I told you, HB is made of globin chain and heme chain. Globin chain, they are made of what? Alpha and beta that we know very well. Now, let me tell a little bit more about heme also. In heme, we have iron and protoporphyrin. So now, very simple that the, the globin chain is alpha and beta chain and heme molecule is iron and protoporphyrin is a composition. So as of now, we'll be talking about this component. This is the, uh, is the focus of attention in my today's talk. So as I told you, uh, they are labeled as alpha thalassemia. If the alpha chain is effect uh, is uh, defected, and beta thalassemia if the beta chain is involved. This was the basic which I discussed in the previous slides. Now, we, so we in our question there was a Greek. It was a Greek male was marrying a Greek female and they are really concerned about the offspring what they are going to have. But why it is so? So now let me focus about Greek origin also. Well, beta thalassemia I just mentioned to you, it is common in blacks. Greeks, just see, in Greece, this is also known as Greece and Greek, same thing. Prevalence is about 15 to 30 percent. Amazing. That means if there are, uh, you are taking a lecture in the Greece, 
if there are 100 people sitting in the audience, there may be around 15 to 30 percent is the very high prevalence. So now you understood the meaning why the word Greek was important. And that means in, in fact, Greece people, they are quite aware of the problem. That's why everybody is concerned about, uh, about the disease. That's why the question also says that male and female, they are want to know about more about the thalassemia. Italians, blacks, and in Iran, 25% of the blood collected for transfusion is used for thalassemia. 25% is a huge percentage. That means the disease is very common in Iran also. Well, with this, now I like to show you a lovely picture. Lovely picture. So in fact, the country, Greece, Italy, they are quite near the Mediterranean Sea. So this the, is the diagram of this Mediterranean, this Mediterranean Sea. This the whole is the Mediterranean Sea. And here is the Italy. Here is the Greece. So these are, that's why, if you can look into, okay, yes, Greece and Italy. So that's why the disease is very common in Mediterranean area. So that's why also this beta thalassemia in particular is also known as Mediterranean thalassemia because this disease is confined to this area more likely to see. So now you understood the meaning of so-called Greek in the question. Let's revisit the slide. Alpha thalassemia, this is very common in Southeast Asia. So typically, now remember, Southeast Asia include Indian subcontinent and, uh, and the East Asia's, okay? African West Coast also, but it, in the black, it is only 5%. So black, it is more of a beta thalassemia. So typically, whenever you will be getting a question about alpha thalassemia, it will be from the Southeast Asian countries. So now you are clear about the word Greek country. Now, a little bit more, now, a little bit genetics also. It is very important to understand because the, what I'm talking is all basic concept, foundation. So we have a beta chain, there are two beta chains. Each is controlled by one gene. That means two chains will be controlled by two genes. But what about alpha? Each chain is controlled by two genes. That means alpha gene will be controlled by four genes and they will be controlled by two genes. Two genes. This is the basic concept you got to know. Most of the students, they have confusion here only. That's why they never could understand what is alpha thalassemia, what is beta thalassemia, what is silent trait, h bard, what is intermedia, major, minor. All are confusion because of not knowing the basic concept. But don't worry, I'll make your basics very, very strong. So, we have a alpha thalassemia problem. What we know just now, what we learn, there are two alpha genes and they are controlled by four genes. Okay? And regarding beta thalassemia, we have two genes and two chains. So, let me talk more about alpha thalassemia first. This is the normal. So, remember, genes, two chains, four genes right? This is normal. That means if the, all the four alpha genes are there, the patient will be having normal alpha gene. Suppose this one gene is defective, then like this. So this is the defective gene. Three genes are normal. Then we call as alpha thalassemia silent. Why we call it silent? Because they don't manifest, they don't have any clinical problem. They are perfectly normal, near normal. So there is no clinical problem, so that's why they remain undiagnosed. So they are important only for the research or academic interest, not clinically, they are not important. Now, there can be two genes defect. It could be minus, minus, alpha, alpha or it can be minus alpha minus alpha. Two genes are there either way. And this is known as 
ओके ट्रेड एल्फा थैलेसीमिया ट्रेड ट्रेड आल्सो नोन एज माइनर आल्सो टू जीन्स इफ थ्री जीन्स आर नॉट देयर हीमोग्लोबिन एच and all the four genes are not there hb part this is hb part since in this all the four genes are not there alpha chain will not be there at all so they these patient do not survive they die in utero only because there is no alpha gene is there no hemoglobin so friends we learned about alpha thalassemia pathophysiology so a silent trait h bard well so we can even have a poem also let's have a fun in learning alpha thalassemia well we can sing a song also if we, if you have to describe alpha thalassemia so you can sing a song silent trait h bard is alpha thalassemia is it just like nursery rhyme recall your nursery days when you we all used to sing the song so it lets study should be a fun so i re i request you to just speak behind me so alpha thalassemia is like what just speak behind me silent trait h bard is alpha thalassemia so i hope your concepts are absolutely clear about alpha thalassemia but invariably in the exam they talk about beta thalassemia which is or which is really confusing but don't worry i'll make it clear in just one minute only okay first of all is the mutation in hbb gene on chromosome 11 you should remember the chromosome 11 okay and what the what the basic problem in genetic is a point mutation so the key word to remember is chromosome 11 the second key word is point mutation and the most common point mutation involved is ivs1 or intron1 so the key word to remember for you is 11 point mutation ivs1 or intron1 they are the four keywords that you got to remember in this particular slide okay well so little bit more information about what is this right so let's talk about question number 2 we are again getting a 28 year woman she is 3 months pregnant she has a history of beta thalassemia trait which of the following hemoglobin variant is elevated in the husband would be associated with significant risk of thalassemia major in the offspring oh let's read the question again she is a 3 months pregnant she is worried she herself is a trait and and what she is saying that that she got the hemoglobin electrophoresis of the husband also which hb is going to have more and more chances to have a fetus or the child developing hemoglobin which hemoglobin in the in the uh, husband the answer is hbf why it is the answer why not others for that we got to know what is trait and what is major thalassemia major so first of all the one slide hemoglobin electrophoresis which i have shown you previously normal pattern when we do hemoglobin electrophoresis we are getting a2 f and a you can very well make out that hba has the maximum maximum concentration this is normal and we also learn that in hemoglobin beta thalassemia major 
HBF is the maximum. You can see A2 is there slightly more. HBA has definitely gone down. So my area of interest at the moment for beta thalassemia major is these two. Look into this. HBF has increased and HBA has gone down. We understood. So now I'll be talking to you regarding genetic aspect of thalassemia. Then I'll be t telling you what is minor, uh, what is major, intermediate. So let's look into this. We know that it is a autosomal recessive. Now pres let's presume that the father is carrier. Remember, it is autosomal recessive means the genes are there, but clinically they will not manifest. That is true for any autosomal recessive. Even the mother is recessive. Let us see. So R is the capital R is the normal and small r is the carrier gene. So we will be getting RR that will be normal child, total normal, both RR, capital R. These two children having one capital R and small r, both are carrier, but no disease. But this gentleman, small r, small r, this will be the one child which will be having affected. It means if there are two recessive uh, people marrying each other, then one out of four child is likely to suffer from beta thalassemia. Understood? Now in our question, the mother is R R. She is a carrier. And father, and remember, let's presume HBF is raised, so let's presume their father is a case of thalassemia. Let's presume. Thalassemia is that both small r are there. So what chances will be there? One child, second child, third child, fourth child. So this will be r r r r r r r r. So now you can, I don't need to tell the illustrious student listening to me. In such cases, there are 50% chances are there the child born will be having disease. And, but other two will be having carrier state will be there. So this answers the question. Of course, the question was, uh, what are the chances? There, there was no question about chances. But chance was there, then it was 50%. But the question is, HBF was raised. This we see in beta thalassemia major. Got it? So, HBF level is what is raised in beta thalassemia major, the point I mentioned, and I'd show you in the previous, this slide also, in that HBF raised is the only, that means the, if the husband, husband get hemoglobin electrophoresis, the HBF level is increased, that means he is suffering from beta thalassemia major. But before I proceed further, we got a term uh, beta thalassemia trait, we, we, uh, I discussed about beta thalassemia major also. So what are these, which are the most confusing? And I believe me, that the, there are three major Intermediate and minor, major, intermediate, and minor. This is the, here, this causes confusion to 99% student. More than 99% student are not clear what are these. So this we learn from basic concept. Let's start from basic concept. Okay. Basic concept. What we know that we have two beta chains. Yeah, we know very well. And we also know that each gene is controlled, each chain is controlled by one gene. So if we get like this, this is a normal. So if we are writing, getting this beta, this is a normal chain. Suppose you get, this means gene is 
normally form. If we get B0, B0 means G and the chain is not formed at all. Zero. Chain is not formed at all. So we write as B0. Then we also read in the textbook B plus. This B plus means the chain has been made partially. What I want to convey, this plus is in relation to zero. Okay, again, I can, I can make the subject more simple. Let us say, let us say that beta chain is not formed at all. Its value is zero. Well, since this lecture is being seen all internationally, this lecture is being watched. So Indian rupee in India currency is rupees. Just like in USA, we have dollar and, and euro in Europe, we have rupees. So we say the value of this B0 is zero. And remember, one rupee has 100 paisa. Okay, this information for international students. So as far our concern is concerned, if the beta zero chain is there, the value is zero paisa. If it is B and uh, is B, we say 100 paisa, that is one rupee. Agreed? One rupee is equal to 100 paisa. So if the beta chain is formed normally is 100 paisa, not formed at all is zero paisa, but if it is partially made, then it is 50 paisa, so-called half rupee. This is the basic thing, basic, simplest way of presentation of the topic. With this basic knowledge, we come back. So we get one person who is B0, B0. So now we just learned that the value of this, this is so-called beta thalassemia major. Beta thalassemia major. If you go by the value, both are zero, both are, so it, the value of this will be zero paisa. Agreed? Suppose you get B, B plus, B plus. It is intermediate. Okay, or, or we get B, B0, either, or, it is also intermediate, the value is 100 paisa, why, 50 paisa, 50 paisa, 100 paisa and 0 paisa, 100 paisa, but if, this is intermediate, but if you get B, and B plus. This is minor, also called trait or minor. This the value is 150, 150. So friends, zero paisa, 100 paisa and 150 paisa. This is the simplest way of presentation. You read books, you read any pathology book, lot of overlapping is there and that caused a confusion. This is the most simplified version about thalassemia. So now if you look into, it is 0 paisa, 100 paisa and 150, okay, what cause, so we can say 0, 100 and 150. So, for those who know Hindi or Indian language, zero, this is rupaiya. Rupaiya is for one rupee. And this is dead rupaiya, what we call as dead rupaiya. So again, we can have a nursery rhyme for you. If you have to describe beta thalassemia, so you can sing a song. Zero, rupaiya, dead rupaiya is beta thalassemia. Now I want you to sing the song with me, behind me. Zero rupaiya, dead rupaiya is beta thalassemia. So entire thalassemia, you can sing a song like this. 
zero rupaya, dead rupaya is beta thalassemia. Silent trait H bar is alpha thalassemia. And I'm friends, I'm sure this is the most simplified version of thalassemia you ever heard in your life. I can challenge on this point. Yes or no? Please do give me the feedback at the end of the show. I'll be giving the, my email ID. I'll be waiting for your answer. Pakka promise. So this is the basic fundamental. Right. With this background of our alpha and beta thalassemia, now I'll move further to learn more. So we are getting one more question, lovely question from pathophysiology question is there. We are getting a 14 year old male child dies. Okay. And in the hospital from an overwhelming infection, autopsy had a bone deformity, hepatosplenomegaly is there. Clumps of eth erythroid precursor are found in the liver and spleen. This precursor will lead to, to what? Remember, the question is asking, clumps of erythroid precursor cell are found in the liver and spleen. This is the meaning of chronic hemolysis, the answer. Why the answer? Why not others? In fact, okay, so answer is chronic hemolysis. So let's take one by one. Explanation. As we read it that there are erythroid precursor, that means those cells in the bone, we all know very well, is a pluripotent stem cell in the bone marrow which makes the, all the cells and it gives rise to all the series, RBC series also, erythroid series which ultimately make the RBCs done. So erythroid precursor, which is the part of bone marrow, which is going to make RBC when they develop. But in some cases, these erythroid precursor, they may go in the liver and spleen also. Okay. Well, before I go further, let me discuss the embryology. Basic concept of embryology of the blood cell formation. We all know that up to six weeks in the intrauterine life, the cells, cells means the blood cells, they are made in the yolk sac. From six weeks to six months of the intrauterine life, the cells are made in the liver and the spleen. Then after six months till the birth, they are made in all, all bones, all bones. That means now it not in liver, not in spleen. So at birth all bones, especially long bones are made throughout the marrow including the of course, uh, of, of course, flat bone also, every part of the bone is making it. But we also know that in adults, when we say adults means 18 years above, it is there in the, in the uh, proximal end of the long bones. And the flat bones like sternum. It is there, the cells are being made in the proximal end of the long bones like tibia and the flat bones like sternum. This is adults. Point to be noted that at birth all long bones and 18 years they are just confined to a limited area. That means as the child grows from birth to 18 years, the site of uh, blood cell formation is reduced and ultimately at the age of at 18 year, they gain the adulthood of the cell formation. But point to be noted that six week to six month, liver and spleen were the site of blood formation. But sometime in adults, this can happen. 
remember I'm talking about adults. The cells are getting made in the in the uh, liver and spleen, right? This is known as extra medullary hemopoiesis. So in this patient, the patient, as the cell erythroid precursor are found in the liver and spleen. Now we know the basic concept, there is erythroid, extra medullary hemopoiesis is going on in the 14 year old child, we are getting liver and spleen having erythroid precursor. What are the common causes? Thalassemia is a very common cause of extra medullary hemopoiesis. Well, this can occur. So other condition where this can happen is myelofibrosis. In myelofibrosis also there can be extra medullary hemopoiesis can be there. But it's a disease of the adults. Adults means elderly people above the age of 50, 40, 50, 60 years. This is not a disease of the age, child of a 14 year old child is not seen. So this is ruled out. So now, most likely, the, as we go, go and we learn that this child must be having thalassemia only, okay? So friends, we are clear about this line, this word I have told you in great details. So now, <clears throat> these erythroid cells, they are in the liver and spleen, <clears throat> they are, so this erythropoietin, say this is the liver and it has got erythroid cells are there. Now this erythropoietin will come and activate this and they will make the RBCs. So this is occurring in chronic hemolytic anemia like beta thalassemia. <coughs> well, in, in case of beta thalassemia, let's learn a little bit more about pathophysiology of beta thalassemia. So what we know about beta thalassemia, beta chains are not getting made and there are uh, hemoglobin F and hemoglobin A2. So these RBCs, they, are, they have a short half-life, they have short lifespan and that's why they predispose to hemolytic anemias. What type of hemolytinema? It is a type of extravascular. This is a golden line to remember. Extravascular hemolytic anemia means the cells are getting destroyed in the cells of the reticular endothelial system like spleen. So something very interestingly, spleen is making the cells RBC and spleen is also removing the cell, they are destroying the cell. And they, that means they have a, it, in thalassemia, they have a type of chronic hemolytic anemias. We understood. We come back. So in these patients, there is hepatosplenomegaly occurs due to excess of hematopoiesis, so-called extramedullary hemopoiesis. Not only that, of course, that there is liver and spleen are getting, but in addition, Whatever bone is there, remember, in the normal adults, 18 year, the proximal end of long bone. And at birth, it was all the bones, and as we are going from birth to the adult, the area was getting, area of cell formation was getting reduced. But in this, it remained as it is, rather it become more and more prominent. So before getting blood from spleen and liver, the bone marrow is working, to the full capacity, rather over capacity. That's why bone marrow thins the bony cortex and impair the bone growth. What do you mean by this? Let's presume this is the bone, normal bone. Okay? This is the bone marrow. This is the cortex. Cortex and this is the bone marrow. I'm just showing you a simple diagram, <clears throat> although it occurs more in the proximal end. But in thalassemia, 
this become like this. <coughs> just see, <coughs> just see, the bone marrow has expanded like anything. Cortex, this cortex is reduced to a thin layer. So what I want to convey the message is that in these cases bone marrow hyperplasia occurs and that's why pathological fractures are very common because the, the cortex which, which gives the strength to the bone is very thin. It is just like a paper thin. Definitely if it is a paper thin it can get fractured very fast. Well, as I told you, the bone marrow is getting hyperplasia, frontal bossing occur, and prominent malar eminence is the classical feature that we see in any case of beta thalassemia. So ultimately, it gives rise to chip monk face. This is a so commonly asked question. So if you get chip monk face, the golden line to remember, chip monk face is equal to beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia. The chipmunk face you get in any question to 99.9% .9 you are dealing with beta thalassemia. So we understood. Now let's look into other option. Can be option A frequent transfusion. Frequent transfusion we do in condition like, like, like in case of beta thalassemia also, right? But frequent transfusion will not lead to extramedullary hemopoiesis. Rather this we do because the patient is anemic. So we have to give blood transfusion so that it has extramedullary hemopoiesis not related to frequent blood transfusion. Immune phenomena, immune phenomena disease is not related to extramedullary hemopoiesis. I told you the other important cause is myelofibrosis. None of the immune phenomena disease like ITP or CLL in these extramedullary hemopoiesis is not a feature. Erythropoietin deficiency, this occur in chronic renal failure. Why? Because we know very well erythropoietin is produced from the kidney. The kidney is failing, erythropoietin will be less, that will lead to anemia. But this will not lead to extramedullary hemopoiesis. Iron deficiency, no way. We are well aware iron deficiency anemia is a very common cause of anemia in the world. It has nothing to do with uh, it extra medullary hemopoiesis. This option is also ruled out. So friends, golden line to remember. Presence of erythroid precursor in organs such as liver and spleen indicated of extra medullary hemopoiesis. Okay, of course this statement is for the adults, no need to say. And the extramedullary hemopoiesis is most frequent in conditions like chronic hemolytic anemia such as beta thalassemia. Particularly, beta thalassemia is the, what the examiner is going to ask you. So this is a big summary, summarized in two lines that you got to remember as a golden line to remember. Question number four. We are getting a 17-year-old male, severe beta thalassemia. Okay. One more thing I like to clarify. He says severe beta thalassemia. It is understood that he is talking about major. If even now the severe word is there, suppose this word was not there. A male with beta thalassemia, okay. Only this word is there in the exam. It's a really confusing, it's an incomplete word. But if you never know, they can ask anything. You can't tell in the examiner that your language is incomplete. But you presume that he's talking about beta thalassemia major or so-called severe thalassemia. This is the exam technique. It, well, it undergoes regular blood transfusion, 
we all know very well in beta thalassemia the only treatment practical treatment is uh, blood transfusion <clears throat> of course the best treatment is bone marrow transplantation but that is not a very practical point not a feasible very expensive also as of now the treatment of practical treatment is fre frequent blood transfusion so they have a skeletal deformities mongoloid face so called chipmunk face lymph node biopsy reveals phagocytic cell containing golden yellow cytoplasmic granules what are the most likely what are these granules most likely answer is hemosiderin why this answer what is hemosiderin this we will never understand unless you know the basic concepts the right answer is hemosiderin some basic concept the basic concept goes like this hemosiderin which is the answer is a golden yellow brown pigment it may appear either as a granule or crystalline form so first of all they discuss about color is somewhere around golden yellow color form may be granule or may be a crystalline form it is a hemoglobin derive derived marker of iron accumulation this is the important line you got to remember the golden line to remember it is a what it is a it is a hemoglobin derive marker of iron accumulation but let's learn more about this line biochemically hemosiderin is composed of aggregates of ferritin that means hemosiderin what we have been talking is simply talking about ferritin so let's read little bit more physiology to understand this when iron is circulating in the blood it is carried by protein called transferrin well just to give you a simplified example iron is there in the git and iron is absorbed in the proximal ileum or so called or the so called duodenum or the upper jejunum iron is absorbed and this iron come to the blood and it is going via transferrin okay so iron so once the iron has just like you go to any place suppose you are going to a place your Uh, and because you have to go to uh, to meet some your one of your friend your friend sends a driver to you and driver come and receives you this is you this is the driver and this driver will okay come and you are going with him once they this driver and you reach the home then driver says okay he hands over this to to you he says yes you come and receive him at the gate of your house friend transferring is the driver okay and finally they come and they come to the tissues there this iron will bind to apoferritin apoferritin and they make ferritin this is your friend this is you together you are hugging each other hello how are you shake hand come on oh you are both are very happy you are meeting after a long time then you have a group photograph let's have a photo okay and somebody is clicking the photo oh this the photo together and you are sitting at home well enjoying it's a evening time enjoying the cold chilled beer or wine whatever or tea coffee whatever you want anyway 
the idea is to tell you what is ferritin and we know this ferritin <clears throat> is something to do with iron i don't think i need to tell you this so simple thing so friends when hemolytic anemia occurs excess of iron and of course repeatedly iron transfusion are going on going on that's the only treatment of beta thalassemia we know so we have excess of iron is there in the body and excess of iron ferritin is a rather a stored form of iron is a stored form of iron so this excess of iron get deposited in the various organs in the body which can which can damage okay so excess of iron ferritin get deposited in the bone marrow lymph node and when we see under microscope remember ferritin is the way it was biochemical name deposit in the tissue now we have taken the biopsy and we are looking under the microscope then we call it to be hemosiderin so we are clear about it the hemosiderin ferritin are almost same ferritin we use a term when we are taking a blood sample when we are actually talking about clinically and hemosiderin is the one which a which a pathologist will going to see uh, under the microscope and known ka right so anything which will lead to excess of iron uh, will have hemosiderin the clinical applied that and this excess of iron is going to destroy many of the organs particularly liver cork liver lead to hika liver disease can lead to cirrhosis of liver it can even deposit in the pancreas can lead to diabetes in the skin it can lead to skin pigmentation pigmentation that's why these together are known as bronze diabetes it can lead to cardiomyopathy also bronze diabetes the name because there is a pancreas is destroyed and the skin is pigmentation is there bronze diabetes is there so that's why we want to chelate this iron so this the second clinical applied we use various chelating agent in condition like beta thalassemia okay like desferoxamine this is a clinical applied of two things excess of iron so we could nicely correlate physiology pathology and medicine and pediatric about the iron status in in beta thalassemia so iron chelation is needed so that patient benefited otherwise bound to have lot of problem let's look into other option can it be bilirubin no way option a bilirubin is a primary or pigment found in the bile it is related to jaundice it doesn't have any iron so since there is no iron so there is no source of okay, talking about this as a hemosiderin no way it has nothing to do with iron so this answer is ruled out lipofuscin what is this again not a, not a very familiar term jaundice bilirubin everybody knows insoluble yellow brown pigment oh the color remain the same composed of lipid and phospholipid with protein it is protein with lipid lipoprotein you can say and they are as with aging or wear and tear they are the granules of the particle of pigment of wear and tear in the elderly person this will not be seen in the young people no way so understood so it again it is not related to iron it is lipid and protein melanin is a yellow again black brown by the melanocyte it's a word for skin pigmentation that is i think everybody knows what melanin it has nothing to be do with the iron at all okay this one will give a black color to the skin amyloid deposit is again amyloid protein is a type of red extracellular substance and that can damage the cell but again amyloid is nothing to nothing to do, do with the iron now a very very whenever they talk about amyloid they always ask the stain which stain we will use to look for the 
amyloid protein. All of you write down the answer in your copy. I am sure you have written this. The answer is Congo red. This is we use for amyloid and for iron we use Prussian blue. These stains you should know very well, they are asked throughout the world in all the exams. So friends, golden line to remember. Hemosidin accumulation is a prominent in patients with hemolytic anemia or those who receive repeated blood transfusion. In fact, repeated blood transfusion is the even better answer than the hemolytic anemia. Like thalassemia, this occurred due to blood transfusion. Of course, hemolysis has to be there. Iron chelation therapy is indicated, especially in beta thalassemia, otherwise it can damage many organs. Question number five, we are getting Italian woman. Italy, you remember the very basic, it is near the Mediterranean Sea, Greece, Italy. Anemia, Hb is 70 gram or so called 7 gram person. Hypochromia is there and RBC shape is variable. Nucleated cells are there. Most likely answer is thalassemia. Look into the word marked hypochromia. Okay. Marked hypochromia and we are getting nucleated cells are their Italian origin. Let us see why this the answer, why not others. Okay, we'll take one by one. So when we, whenever we investigate a case of thalassemia, first of all, best initial test is peripheral blood film. Simple, a slide is made and what we get is, what we get is, uh, what we get is, target cells are seen like this target cells are seen okay this is a classical finding there is microcytic hypochromic picture with target cells if you get this finding, you are dealing 99%, you are dealing with beta thalassemia. Severe, there may be red cell dysplasia can be there, that's the basic pathophysiology. Severe reduction in HBA that we discussed with that we discussed with C do by hemoglobin electrophoresis. Nestroff test is, is screening test that we do in beta thalassemia. RBC free protoporphyrin level are normal. This is very, very important point. Very, very important point that in this RBC protoporphyrin level is normal. Okay. Raise HBF. It's the most characteristic finding. This is the most characteristic finding okay, that we see in a case of, in a case of uh, beta thalassemia. Well, regarding this reduc reduction in HBA, raise HBF level, hemoglobin electrophoresis I discussed previously. So I would like to talk about this particular entity free protoporphyrin level are normal. This is not known to 99% students. So I'll talk more about this detail. Okay, protoporphyrin level is normal. What is this? Again, go back to basic concept. We learn, we learn that 
that we got hemoglobin. It is made of globin chains and it is made of heme. We also know that heme is made of iron and protoporphyrin. Okay. So here what he says the protoporphyrin level is normal. Let's learn more about this. So proto <coughs> so again basic biochemistry. If I asked you from where this protoporphyrin comes, it is a part of what? Porphyrin synthesis. Synthesis. So we all know that we have a delta amino levy lunic acid. What we write as ALA. And after lots of lots of steps, finally protoporphyrin is synthesized. This is a huge process. Okay, but at the moment uh, I'm just focusing on thalassemia, not on the porphyrias. So any defect in this chain formation leads to porphyria. Got it? Again repeating second time. Alpha, but the delta amino leveling acid is after lots of step it make protoporphyrin. If any problem occurs anywhere in this any step, we call as porphyria. Anyway, in thalassemia, there is no problem of making protoporphyrin. It is made normally. Then it combined with iron and it will make what? It will make heme. We know very well that in case of thalassemia, there is no problem of iron, there is no problem of protoporphyrin, they are normal. Heme will be synthesized normally, agreed. And we also know that globin is alpha and beta glob globin chains are there. And we, by now we understood in beta thalassemia, this is the problem, in the alpha thalassemia, this is the problem. So in thalassemia, Protoporphyrin level will be normal. But problem is regarding alpha and beta thalassemia. So Hb level will be reduced. But protoporphyrin level will be normal. Now, let me make your basic concepts more clear. So we are clear about it that in case of thalassemia, heme component will be totally normal. Now let us see there is one patient who has got iron deficiency anemia, IDA, iron deficiency anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, this will be normal. Yes, there is no problem, normal. Even this is normal. There is no problem in, in protoporphyrin chain. This is not there. This is not there. Let me give you an example. This is a pen and this is a cap. These together they make a pen. Pen, cap, yeah. We have a factory where these pens are getting made. One machine is making pen, other is making cap. Finally they make and they make a complete pen. Suppose in the factory, there are, there are two machines. This machine is normal. It is making this but second machine which is making cap is not there. So pens, pen, pen without cap will be there. So friends, so there will be, remember, excess of protocol, excess of pens will be there, no caps. So in iron deficiency anemia, cap is not there. This iron is not there. 
तो प्रोटोपोरोफायरिन लेवल विल बी इंक्रीज फ्री प्रोटोपोरोफायरिन फ्री पेन्स विल बी इंक्रीज बिकॉज दे इज नो कैप नाउ सेकेंड का वन मोर कंडीशन सपोज अ पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम पोरफायरिया इन पोरफायरिया दिस चेन इज नॉट गेटिंग मेड आयरन इज देयर दैट मीन्स नाउ द सीनेरियो इज रिवर्स द कैप मशीन इज नॉर्मल पेन मशीन इज नॉट देयर तो एक्सेस ऑफ आयरन तो एक्सेस ऑफ फ्री आयरन विल बी देयर इन द आर बी सी इन पोरफायरिया सो This is more commonly asked in the exam. In iron deficiency anemia, free protoporphyrin level will be increased. In thalassemia, the free protoporphyrin level will be normal. Okay, so you understood the meaning of this particular. This is this is not a slide of, uh, of of. Uh, this is not a slide of thalassemia. Thalassemia alka classically we see target cells. Question number six. Fifty-three-year-old male, type two diabetes. He keeps diary and his sugar is in the range of hundred ten to hundred eighty milligram per person or six to ten millimole per liter over the last four months. Fairly well controlled. His only medication is metformin. he doesn't use any tobacco balanced diet jogging hb a2 his increased to 7.5 normal is 1.5 what is this this is beta thalassemia trait well hb a2 is increase and obviously they did not mention anything about hbf that thing is there and hba2 is only 7.5 normally 1.5 to 3.5 this if you get only raise hba2 99.9 person you are dealing with beta thalassemia trait right down if you are getting own hba2 only hba2 raised with normal hbf you are dealing with you are dealing with beta thalassemia trait golden line to remember so next time when you get a question like this or hba2 is raised and there is either they will say hbf is normal normal hbf is less than 1% or they don't mention like this thing 99% you are dealing with beta thalassemia trait so simple i made your th this question very simple okay very simple so let's look into this this very frequently asked table i'll spend time we have done hemoglobin electrophoresis normal we get hba 95 to 97 or 98 percent HbA2 is 1.5 to 3.5. HbF is less than 1 percent. The point I discussed in the previous question. Well, in minor, okay, in beta thalassemia, minor, what you get is this is slightly in in major. HbA will be absent, HbA2 will be abs, right, will increase, and HbF will be increased markedly. This we see in beta thalassemia major. Okay, major. Now what you will be getting in 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 case of minor, and what you will be getting in case of intermediate. Now in minor, you will be getting. HbA का this is this is और but I'll make it separate HbA A to F in major you make this slide major this is highly reduce increase increase in 
in in trade or so called minor it is increase normal slight reduce slightly reduce so what i want to convey the message is in minor only hba2 is increase but this increase is not very high it is in the range of 7 to 8% sbf is normal this is the classical feature and in the exam invariably they will talk about trade or minor only so if you are getting increase a2 increase a2 with normal hbf you are dealing with a trait also called minor okay so called minor now what is most important mcv is markedly reduced as compared to mch this is the classical line you don't have to forget if you are getting this line what does the mean this mild hypochromia with marked microcytosis this need, this the sense the most important line so i'll spend lot of time in explaining to you like in iron deficiency anemia this is mc h that is uh hypochromia mcv volume mch is reduced mcv is equally reduced but in in case of beta thalassemia trait mch mcv point to be noted again look at me this is mch this is mcv mch mcv in iron deficiency anemia both are reducing parallel but in beta thalassemia trait mch mcv mch mcv to so mcv has gone down out of proportion to mch this what we see in iron deficiency anemia this what we see in beta thalassemia trait don't forget this line if the examiner has to ask throughout the world whichever exam you write if examiner has to ask question on thalassemia he'll ask question on beta thalassemia trait he will ask trait and he'll be asking you this question to you and the question can be asked because beta thalassemia trait is a close differential diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia this line will be there so i am leaking the paper to you but in a very honest way this this point come in almost all the exam so in addition to that that we get in case of thalassemia we get basophilic stippling or punctate basophilia you get numerous basophilic inclusion body in the rbc that you can see here that is seen when the rapid uh, turnover of this rbc is there so now in our question hba2 is increase and there was undiagnosed hemoglobinopathy i told you that trait it remain undiagnosed so now come the confusing question about glycemic control we know that for glycemic control we use glycated hemoglobin which is hba 1c option d point to be noted that in thalassemia hba level is changed and we check hba 1c to look for the glycemic control hba 2 is not related to diabetic control so otherwise uh, in a case of beta thalassemia when hb hba is not there then hba one c is not a good investigation to monitor diabetic control 
but as b a2 is increased this is immaterial it is the finding that we get in beta thalassemia trait with a normal hbf hence hence the best answer is hba2 nothing to do with hba1c which is option d okay changes in rbc live survival can influence hba level and thereby it can influence hba1c right so as i as i told you that's why we never use hba or hba1c to monitor diabetic control in thalassemia patient in fact this is true for any hemoglobinopathy including sickle cell also we never use now i have a question for you we are getting one patient of beta thalassemia major and we learn by now that hba and he is diabetic also we get one patient of hemoglobin thalassemia with diabetes so we are not going to use hba1c to monitor his diabetes long term diabetes beyond doubt write down the answer in your copy we got beta thalassemia patient with diabetes we want to look for the we want to monitor which investigation you will do write down the answer in your copy to so look for the long term diabetes control well the answer is fructosamine right option c diabetic nephropathy it goes to chronic renal failure and can lead to reduce erythropoietin production of course that will result in anemia but remember even anemia is there the respective percentage of various hemoglobin will not change recall HbA is ninety-five to ninety-seven percent. A2 is one point five to three point five percent. F is less than one percent. So this will not change. Of course, total Hb will be reduced, but percentage share of each will remain the same. Same thing is true for iron deficiency anemia also. Also called option C. hb level will go down the percentage of each will remain normal same with sickle cell trait also sickle cell trait hbs will be there and hba level r r ka r ka reduce but hba percentage whatever whatever hba a2 they will not be changed so that's why hba2 will be increase only in condition of beta thalassemia or beta cell lymphoma trait all in all other option given the question the percentage of each hemoglobin will remain normal so golden line to remember hemoglobin a2 is elevated in beta thalassemia okay and because there is reduced synthesis of hemoglobin a glycemic control we look by hba1c which is there we tell you the value of 10 to 12 weeks but that take hba into consideration hba2 is not related to diabetic control so hba1c level can be affected by alteration in rbc cell survivor survivor means like any hemolytic anemia any hemolytic anemia HbA1c level will be defective. So in such cases, we go for checking fructosamine. A twenty-two-year-old woman, early pregnancy, a fit, and hemoglobin is hundred gram per liter or so called ten gram. MCV is reduced drastically. Platelet and RWBC count is in the normal range. 
blood film is unremarkable is no special finding most likely is beta thalassemia trait why why is the answer this marked microcytosis with mild anemia go back hb level is 10 near normal and she's a pregnant lady but mcv is highly reduced so there is marked microcytosis as compared to hypochromia that we see in trait what about other option hemodilution in pregnancy can lead to typical normocytic anemia it lead to normocytic anemia okay not that microcytic anemia and hereditary spherocytosis is the option c there we get spherocyte are seen they have a normal or slightly low mcv but but it does not cause significant low mcv remember the classical word is mcv out of reduce mcv reduce out of proportion to mch this is the diagnostic of trait remember i told you in iron deficient anemia both will come down together but only one thing will mcv come down mch less this is trait so in heritage spherocytosis little little bit scar microcytosis but not out of proportion ruled out iron deficient anemia this is option d already discussed in that case both mcv and mch will be have proportionate lowering not like this the hemoglobin 10 and mcv 60 is not a feature of iron deficiency it's same thing with pseudoblastic anemia also we don't see like this okay and moreover uh, in, in case of thalassemias, there can be basophilic stippling or target cells may be seen. But in this case, in our case, the even peripheral smear is unremarkable. So one key word which is justified, clarify all this whole question is MCV, reduce out of proportion to MCH. They may not give you MCH. Like in this case, they say it is 10 gram percent of Hemoglobin is there, pregnant ladies, fairly, not mild anemia is there. Okay, so, but MCV is highly reduced. Same, almost same type of question, 23 year lady, HB 10.4, platelet is, is 2.78. And 68 MCV highly reduced, microcytic hypochromic marked and isocytosis HbA2 is increased slightly. What is this trait? Do I need to tell you? Simple Hb is 10.4, but if this is MCV is out of proportion supported by HbA2. In fact, if this line was not there, then question could have been a little tough. But the, the examiner has made the question very easy. He says, come on, HbA2 is this. So he has already, if you know the basic concept, the question becomes very easy. Oh, we are, before looking to the option, you can think, oh, we are dealing with why HbA got trade because of race HbA2 beta thalassemia trait. So we are getting mild anemia, marked microcytosis with race A2. This is beta thalassemia trait. This does not occur in, in lead poisoning. This does not occur in sickle cell. This none of the condition. You get this finding where HPA2 should be increased and MCV reduced out of proportion. So state forward be ruled out. Now the final thing, this is the slide I'm showing you worth million dollar and from every exam in the world you'll be getting one question from this. What is this? Iron deficiency resemble like beta 
thalassemia trait. Okay. So what are the difference between iron deficient anemia and beta thalassemia trait? Serum iron is reduced in iron deficiency anemia. It is normal in trait. Serum ferritin is decreased. It is normal in trait. RDW. RDW stands for red cell. RBC distribution width. It is very frequently asked question is a parameter to know about N isocytosis. This means different type of shape. For example, look into this. In this, we are getting different, we, are, we made a peripheral smear and you are getting cells like this. Some are small, some are big. So they have a anisocytosis. So what we say, RDW is increased. That means different type of shapes are there. This we see in iron deficiency anemia. Look into this. I made another peripheral smear and we are finding the RBCs are of the same size. Here the RDW is normal. This is what we see in thalassemia. It's normal in thalassemia. Menzer index more than 13 and less than 13. But what is this? Look into this. Menzer index is MCV divided by total RBC count. Okay. So, it in iron deficiency anemia, MCV is slightly reduced. But the RBC count is reduced, reduced much more than the MCV. The ratio is more than 13. But here, in beta thalassemia trait, MCV is reduced drastically and RBC count is near normal. Near normal. That's why this is less than 13. So, don't forget how we really calculate menstrual index. Hemoglobin electrophoresis will be normal in iron deficiency anemia and the HbA2 HbA2 level will be increased in beta thalassemia trait, the point we have discussed so many times. RBC free protoporphyrin level will be increased in iron deficiency, it will be normal in beta thalassemia trait, the point which I explained to you earlier. Similarly, we got serum level of transferrin receptor protein are the one which, which can bind to transferrin, it is increased normal. Nest of test is negative in iron deficient anemia, it is positive in thalassemia. It's a screening test to know about thalassemia. Punctate basophilia, no, it is there. Punctate basophilia indicate increased RBC turnover. And this is seen in any case of hemolytic anemia. And beta thalassemia is a type of hemolytic anemia to punctate basophilia. MCV, MCH both are equally reduced and in beta thalassemia MCV is reduced drastically and this is reduced mildly. Iron therapy, yes, no. We don't give iron therapy in, in iron in case of thalassemia. Blood transfusion needed in severe cases, it is not needed in beta thalassemia trait. Remember, we may give uh, a blood transfusion in severe iron deficiency anemia, but we never give in trade. So there are so many differences are there. You forget everything, I don't mind, but don't forget this. This is the most important line. 
I repeat again, MC V, MCH, both are equally reduced in iron deficiency, but in case of, but in case of uh, thalassemia trait, this MC V is reduced much more than the MCH. This can't afford to forget. So golden line to remember, disproportionate mycocytic anemia. That means MCV reduced out of proportion to MCH is beta thalassemia trait. Part 2 of the thalassemia and heredity spherocytosis. We are getting a 45 year old woman, intense pain in the upper abdomen. There is, okay, she had similar episode many months ago also. The jaundice is there, splenomegaly, ultrasound shows opaque gallstones. Coomtus negative, small RBCs, several of them have no central pallor. Most likely cause. If you look into this, we are getting sphere, we are getting small RBCs, no central pallor. That is typically what we see in hereditary spherocytosis. And this is the gene mutation in encoding and chirin is the answer. Why this answer, why not others? Let's look into. Let's look into the causes. So explanation. The lady is suffering from hereditary spherocytosis. How can you say? Spherocytes are there, small RBCs, and they lack the central pallor. This is a beautiful description of the spherocyte. Small RBCs without any loss, without any central pallor. In iron deficient anemia also we have a small RBC size, but they have a central pallor. So this is the case of spherocyte. Now let's read more about the basic concept of heredity spherocytosis. It is an autosomal dominant condition. Seen in North Europe. Remember, so now it is so important to know from which place the patient is coming. If the patient is coming from Mediterranean country, you think about thalassemia. If the patient is coming from sub sahara area, think about sickle cell anemia. That is so important. Mediterranean area means Greece, Italy, etc. So now it's again very important from which part of the world the patient is coming to you. Just to update you, thalassemias we see in like Italy, Greece, this is the Mediterranean Sea, this is sickle cell anemia, sub-Sahara, this is Sahara Desert and this is the sub-Sahara, so this is the southern part of the Africa, is sub-Sahara where we have sickle cell and North Europe, North Europe is the part where we have a heredity spherocytosis. So now simple geography, now you will remember what type of question are being asked depending on where the patient is coming from. Okay, so pathophysiology of the heredity spherocytosis, there is a qualitative and quantitative deficiency of scaffoldings 
skeletal protein in the RBC membrane, which is made of pectin and enchirin. There are two main protein. Of course, there are few more, but at the moment I'm talking about enchirin and pectin. These are the one which are there in the cell membrane. They make, they maintain the normal shape of the RBC. If these are deficient, then the the RBC, which is a normal, this normal RBCs, it will look from side, it look like a dumbbell shape. If you look from the front, you have a central pallor. This is central pallor and this is the front size. But in these cases, when we see, you get RBC like this without any small size, without any central pallor. Look into the size. Look into central pallor. There is no central pallor. The central pallor is there. So defective RBC membrane formation is heredity is ferrocytosis. Look into this. So this is the normal RBCs. And here we have defective enchirin protein though it becomes like a, like a football. And that lead to reduce surface to volume area. Surface volume this area will be reduced right so what happened what happened normally as i told you because these cells are not made properly so they are removed by the splenic macrophages what i mean to say there will be extra vascular hemolytic anemia Cells are getting removed by the spleen and that's why spleen is enlarged in this patient. Very, very important point. So the normal RBC, what I showed you, they can expand, they can maneuver. They are very elastic. Their body is just like a gymnast. We all have seen gymnasts. They learn, they can bend the body like anything, they can jump like blah blah. We, you and me are not gymnasts. We can't bend the body the way gymnasts can bend it. So remember, they are gymnasts, like gymnastic. Normal RBC, like gymnastic, they can bend the body like anything. But in heredity spherocytosis, the cell is smaller in size. They lost the central pallor. The two things you should not forget. And they are non-flexible. Since they are non-flexible, they cannot squeeze into small capillaries. They are removed. And they are lead to extra vascular hemolytic anemia. And remember, the problem is in the RBC membrane itself. It's a type of intrinsic defect with extra vascular hemolytic anemia. So three keywords are small size, loss of central pillar, and they are non-flexible. So they are destroyed in the spleen, intrinsic defect repeating second time. The problem is in the problem is in the RBC membrane and the hemolysis is occurring in the extra means in the liver and spleen. <coughs> RBC loses the biconcave shape they become like it and that it to decrease surface to volume ratio that they are easy to burst they get burst very fast that's a classical finding that we get in these patients okay yeah let's look into other option mechanical wall there's no history there's no cardiac problem no cardiac surgery First of all, this uh, history itself is nothing to talk about valve. Moreover, if the, of course, we know very well the mechanical valve can lead to, can lead to type of hemolytic anemia. But they tend to, they cause due to, they cause due to mechanical trauma that lead to hemolysis. And in these cases, gallstones are not the feature. And even there will be schistocytes, which are nothing but bite cells. Bite cells will be seen. What is the type of bite cell? 
this is say normal RBC. This is the bite cell. A part of the RBC membrane has been removed. This is so called bite cell. So also bite cell. Or so called schistocyte. This will be seen in mechanical trauma. But in case of heredity ferrocytes, we will be getting spherical shape. So this is ruled out. And moreover, gallstone is not a feature of mechanical valve. Mutation then gene encoding for G6PD. This is talk about G6PD deficiency. This is not a case. In G6PD deficiency, there is the hemolytic anemia occur due to any drug or it occurs maybe due to any infection. This is not the case. So they have an episodic and moreover they have a type of in, mainly intravascular hemolytic anemia. Mainly, little bit of extravascular can happen, but in this classically patient take a sulfur drug or maybe a drug for, 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 for malaria and they develop black color of urine is what we get in g 6 deficiency. Circulating antibody target against the RBC, in that case, Coombe test should be positive, but in our case, Coombe test is negative. So this is ruled out. In iron deficient anemia, gallstone are not the feature. So this is again ruled out. Hence, the best answer is heredity is ferrocytosis, which is due to proca and carin defect. Eight year old boy complained of upper respiratory tract infection for last three days, cough rhinorrhea, looks yellow. Patient is in class three, examination relieves pallor and ictrus. Okay. Well, if you look into the HB is nine gram. Retic count is 10.8 percent. Increased retic count is the classical diagnostic feature of any hemolytic anemia. Remember, if the retic count is not increased, then it is not a case of hemolytic anemia. It's increased, it is a hemolytic anemia. Platelet normal, TLC count normal, bilirubin race. That means mainly unconjugated. UC stands for unconjugated because conjugated is only 0.8. So unconjugated will be 2.20 milligram per cent. Enzyme level are near normal. In the peripheral smear, this is the classical peripheral smear of so-called heredity spherocytosis. You can see typical spherical cells without any central pallor. Look into this. No central pallor is there. Only this is the one cell we can, we can see central pallor. Rest nowhere. This picture you don't have to forget. Now what the most likely cause of this condition? We already have diagnosed this is a case of heredity spherocytosis. RBC cell membrane defect. We learned in the previous question in this, the cell membrane protein like N-chirin okay, N or spectin are defective and that makes the RBC's membrane is defective. This is the answer. So, the correct answer is option C. So, we are getting anemia, reticulocytosis. Indirect bilirubin again indicate hemolytic anemia. Okay. Spherocytes are there on the slide. That is really conformity that we are dealing with heredity spherocytosis. Let's look into other options. Can it be CD8 cell? Cannot be because enzymes are normal. And whenever if this is due to CD8 cell, hepatocellular injury, then the liver enzymes, they should have been highly increased. Liver enzyme, SGOT, SGPT, and alkaline phosphate, all normal. 
तो दे इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ हिपेटोसेलर इंजरी दिस ऑप्शन रूल्ड आउट जी सिक पी डेफिशियंसी इट लीड टू एपिसोडिक जॉन्डिस एंड अगेन इन दिस केस वी टिपिकली इफ यू वी गेट हाइंस बॉडी नॉट फेरोसाइड Peripheral smear itself can give you the answer. The spherocytes are there, okay. And again, in case of a GCPD, you get a type of so-called bite cells are there, which are not seen here. And moreover, there is a history of drug intake or infection, which lead to episodic uh, type of intravascular hemolysis that you get. You get cola color of urine. Nothing is there. So this GCPD is ruled out. alpha and beta globin chain formation this is a defective in thalassemia in thalassemia you get microcytic hypokomic picture with the target cells target cells are there and that is seen in young adults young children so so it's not now the question is nothing to do with the thalassemias nuclear maturation defect due to def defect to dna this we see in macro megaloblastic anemia like where the dna synthesis is effective like vitamin b12 or folic acid deficiency where we get macrocytic anemia not the spherocyte the classical picture is regarding spherocyte as seen so in these cases we will get more of a macrocytic not the spherocyte this ruled out Question number three: A twenty-year-old recurrent episode of jaundice. Uh, no history of travel, no past medical history, and pallor. It is mild splenomegaly. Okay, mild. No hepatomegaly. No lymph nodopathy. Hb nine. Platelet TLC normal. LDH increase. इनडायरेक्ट बिलोरुबिन का इस टोटल बिलोरुबिन थ्री पॉइंट फोर डायरेक्ट वन इनडायरेक्ट इज टू पॉइंट फोर एनजाइम्स आर नॉर्मल एल डी एच इज इंक्रीज विद एनीमिया इंक्रीज एल डी एच इज ए फीचर ऑफ हिमोलिटिक एनीमिया रिमेंबर ऑल दो रेटिकलोसाइड काउंट इज द बेस्ट बट एग्जामर इज वेरी स्मार्ट ही डिड नॉट गिव एनीथिंग अबाउट रेटिक काउंट ही टॉक्ट अबाउट एल डी एच लेवल and rbc are incubated in hypotonic saline hemoglobin is released most likely chances of developing are what pigment gallstone what is talking about what clue he has given that he talking about osmotic fragility test is positive That means he has given an indirect clue that he, uh, this we know this is seen in heredity spherocytosis. Examiner is very clever. He just gave you clue that we are getting increased osmotic fragility. What problem can occur in this pigment gallstone? Cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma are not a complication of heredity spherocytosis. Auto infarction of spleen it is seen in sickle cell anemia. Not in heredity spherocytosis. Episodic venous thrombosis. This we see in PNH. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. Not in heredity spherocytosis. A vascular necrosis of femur is again seen in sickle cell anemia. Not in heredity spherocytosis. So answer is C. Now let me tell you a little bit more about the clinical feature of a case of heredity spherocytosis. Anemia is mild, not severe. Splenomegaly is a classical feature. Remember, in sickle cell anemia, spleen is not palpable. Pigment gallstone at a younger patient. Rather, it is read in you read any surgery book. they say that you the surgeon operate in a young patient for a for a gallstone if it come out to be pigment gallstone 
he will send the patient back to the physician to investigate for heredity spherocytosis. Jaundice, growth retardation, and leg ulcer. This is a classical feature that we see in heredity spherocytosis. So in question number this, what we are talking about, anemia is there, raised LDH, the point I told you, which indicate hemolytic anemia. Indirect hemoglobin urea again indicate hemolytic anemia. The two things. So, and we have incubated with a hypotonic fluid. That means we are positive osmotic fragility test. In heritage ferrocytosis, very, very important is osmotic fragility test. It's a diagnostic for heredity spherocytosis. Okay. So as I told you, there is no question, there is no correlation of cirrhosis and hepatocellular with heredity spherocytosis. And autoinfarction, episodic venous thrombosis, and A was necrosis, which you have already written. They are not related with heredity spherocytosis. Question 4. 30 year old patient, episode of jaundice, and there is anemia, splenomegaly, and jaundice. Several episodes, reticulocytes are there, RBC demonstrate increase osmotic fragility. This is a simple question. Increase osmotic fragility if they talk about then the question says about increased osmotic fragility, 99.9% .9 you are dealing with heredity spherocytosis. And it is also supported by increased reticulocyte count. Because, okay, so this doesn't happen in PNH. In osmotic fragility is not increased in PNH. It is not increased in pyruvate kinase deficiency, which is a congenital enzyme deficiency. This increased osmotic fragility is not seen in sickle cell and thalassemia also it is not seen. So simply, in fact, it's such a diagnostic line, increased osmotic fragility is the golden line. Increased osmotic fragility is heredity spherocytosis. Golden line to remember, increase osmotic fragility is equal to heredity spherocytosis. Very simple. We are getting a 27-year-old man come to you, emergency with right upper, upper abdomen pain, always feel tired, okay? And his BP is 165 by 80, looks pale, jaundice in pain abdominal pain and consistent with cholecystitis his BMI is 24. Oh yes said the patient has cholecystitis. SB10, WBC, TL platelet count, enzymes are near normal and gall and this alkaline phosphate increase this is due to gallstone. Okay. And ultrasound shows the gallstones. What the most useful test for this patient? Blood film. Come on. Again, remember the one line I made told you. If you, a surgeon, gets a patient of gallstone, pigment gallstone, in a younger patient, he will send back the patient to the physician to investigate for the heredity spherocytosis. Suppose that you are the physician, you haven't sent the patient. What the first investigation you will do is peripheral blood film. Suppose in the option there was osmotic fragility. The question is the first investigation is peripheral blood film. Osmotic fragility is the most accurate test, but it's not the first test. Simply send the patient to the lab right now, they will make a film, and you get spherocyte with no central pallor. You get a clue that we are dealing with heredity spherocytosis, and you confirm by 
osmotic fragility. Culture is not going to help you. Cold agglutinin is a test for autoimmune hemolytic anemia, not useful. <coughs> Coom test again for autoimmune, not useful. Hemoglobin electrophoresis is useful for what? Thalassemias, not in a case of heredity spherocytosis. Question 6, 22 year, and you are getting his father. His father had a splenectomy. He looks pale jaundice. HB 9.9, WBC count, platelet count. Uniform spherocytes are seen in the peripheral blood film. Well, he has clear, your, by now your basic concepts are very clear that Remember, his, his father had his splenectomy also. His father had his same problem. Then, which the best way to confirm? Now look, now the question is best way to diagnose. In the previous question where we went for the peripheral blood film, the first investigation. So now, the first investigation peripheral blood film, the most accurate test is osmotic fragility test in heredity spherocytosis. No role of these are tests for autoimmune. This is for this is for the hemoglobin electro for thalassemia. No test, no way we have to investigate by osmotic fragility test. So let me tell you about osmotic fragility test. Well, what happened normally, uh, normal saline is 0.9%. And if you go into 0.4 to 0.5, this we are going for hypotonia. So normal RBCs, they hemolyze at 0.4 to 0.5% of the saline. But in case of in case of heredity spherocytosis, they may hemolyze at 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So they get hemolyzed, but at a higher as compared to normal normal saline concentration. So this is what you call as increased osmotic fragility. So lovely chart. This is the one 0.4 to 0.5 normal. This is increased osmotic fragility and this is reduced osmotic fragility. This is a simple diagram. Invariably, if you get a diagram like this, you are dealing with increased osmotic fragility that we see in heredity spherocytosis. We are getting a lady, 22-year lady, and BP is normal and there is a skin rash is there. Investigation real HB reduced, retic count is reduced, normal 2 to 3 percent. WBC reduced, plate, oh everything is reduced. That means reduce HB, reduce plate layer, reduce uh, uh, WBC also retic count reduce. And definitely this will happen in case of aplastic anemia. And aplastic anemia is the caused by the parvovirus, well known. The aplastic anemia in a case of heredity spherocytosis or sickle cell anemia, the most common cause is parvovirus. It's a notorious virus. And when this problem occurs, patient is severely anemic, patient need blood transfusion. This one indication in heredity spherocytosis where patient may be needing blood transfusion. Normally, blood transfusion is not needed, usually. Okay. So, a patient has a pancytopenia due to aplastic anemia caused by parvovirus infection. 30 year old come with jaundice, now is the age 30 years. Splenomegaly is there, reticulocytosis, RBC, demonstrate increased osmotic fragility. 
he has cleared the question well in advance that you are dealing with heredity spherocytosis. Okay, most successful treatment is splenectomy. Point to be noted. So in extreme cases where the patient has a lot of problem, you, uh, in the case of heredity spherocytosis, we can go for splenectomy. But this should be done above the age of 15 years. It should never be done below 15 years. Once we do the splenectomy, patient will have symptomatic relief. But they, the disease will not be cured. The disease will remain, but symptomatic, symptomatic improvement will be there. For example, there is one patient of typhoid. He has got very high grade fever. You give him paracetamol, his fever will come down, but it will not cure that disease. So symptomatic relief will occur with PCM, but disease will not get cured. So anyway, it is done. So how to manage a case of heredity spherocytosis in general? Always give folic acid in all the patients due to any reason who has got hemolytic anemia. If you do not give, the patient may develop additionally, uh, even meg megaloblastic anemia can develop. However, treatment of choice finally is splenectomy after the age of 15 years. It will stop hemolysis, but it will not remove the spherocyte. It will not remove the disease. Now, when will we advise for splenectomy? When it's causing health impairment really hampering the work, hemolytic crisis going on, aplastic crisis due to parvovirus infection which I mentioned in the previous question or gallstones are there, then in such cases you can think of the, of the splenectomy. Well, when splenectomy occurs, what are the features? How well jolly body are seen? If you get this word, either the spleen is gone or this indicates sickle cell anemia. Why? In sickle cell anemia, autosplenectomy occurs. So, HJ body is sickle cell anemia, Heinz body is G sick PD deficiency. Very simple diagnostic feature. Nucleated RBCs, target cells, they are seen after splenectomy. Thrombocytosis occur, not known to most of students. After the spleen is removed, they have tend to have the plated counts tend to go high. But is it a, if it is a good solution, why not to go for to remove spleen? No, splenectomy itself invites many problems. Patients are prone to infection by encapsulated organism. And the pneumonic is some killer have nice shiny body is the pneumatic to remember. What are the pneumonic stand for? As for streptococcus, klebsiella, hemophilus, neisseria, salmonella and group B streptococci. This is a pneumonic. They are encapsulated bacteria which is common infection to occur after splenectomy or in a case of sickle cell anemia. So precaution after splenectomy. Pneumococcal vaccine should be given one to two months before splenectomy. Before. Dairy penicillin for at least five years following splenectomy and blood transfusion for severe hemolytic crisis. So, next as a discussion will be anemia of chronic disease, macrocytic anemia and aplastic anemia. I have done lot of tests and discussion previously also. All these tests are in YouTube, you can very well see them. Well, I have got a nice announcement for you. I have made a course called Smart Medicine. 
they are the recorded lectures of Minnie Harrison. Somebody asked you which is the best book to read. Harrison is the best book to read, no doubt about it. It is the one book which is written in integrated way. Okay. But it is very vast. Like Gray's Anatomy and Goodman, Gilman, Pharmacology, they are too vast to read. Same with Harrison also. To read one page of Harrison, you need 30 minutes. You to understand, you need two hours. And you need only two minutes to forget what is written in Harrison. So practically not possible. Okay. Like you, your junior asked you, I, your first day student asked you, I want to read anatomy. Will you advise to read Gray's Anatomy? No way. You are asked to read some basic book. The Gray should be used as a reference book. If you want to see some point, go and see Gray. Not as a textbook. Same thing, Harrison is a reference book, not a textbook. Okay. People say, read the tables of Harrison. It's the most stupid statement. In every table, they have given 100 causes. Do you need to remember? No way. Nobody can remember it. You need to remember what is asked in the exam. So I have solved your problem. I have recorded lectures of the whole internal medicine based on Hessen 20th edition. And summary, 300 plus hours. What you need and everything is there. Totally integrated approach. And now I am giving it free of cost to all of you. Free of cost. A Google form is attached to this to today's lecture also. Otherwise, you can very well contact me on my Telegram group, Dr. Bhat Mukesh Bhatia TND series. So, you can see all the videos of the smart medicine free of cost. How to see? How to get? Download eGurukul app, DBMCI eGurukul app. Google form is given below with, with, the, with the lecture. So we are able to give you access to the videos. But still, if you have any problem, any queries, you WhatsApp at this number, the helpline WhatsApp number. My staff will help you. There is some technical problem is coming for international students to whom we have given OTP, but my technical team is working on that also. And we are also some students who have already downloaded eGurukul and they are taking already taken some course. They are also finding some difficulty. So these are the two technical problems that we have come up. We are solving this problem. We we'll like to solve it very fast. And still, you have you want to reach to me? You can reach to me via Telegram group of Dr. Mukesh Bhatia TND, or you can very well mail me. This is my personal email ID. You can note it down. It's easy. Dr. Bhatia. Dr. Dr. Bhatia at DBMI. This is DBMI. It's not DBMCI. It's DBMI dot edu dot in. You can very well mail me. Okay. Do give feedback. How are the class? We, I'm also starting with Medicine Week. We are celebrating Medicine Week on DBMCA Premier Group on Telegram. Join our group on Telegram. Link is in description. Okay. Still, you have any problem, you can very well mail me. Mail email ID I have given to you. Or you can helpline WhatsApp number is also given. A lot of problems, a lot of complaints are coming. So we need some time to resolve also, but make sure that everything will be done soon. We need little time. I've already written a book, many, many medicine simplified, many Harrison ultimate best-selling book is available in Amazon. My aim is to convert you to a small star into moon. There are millions of stars, but there is only one moon. Okay, I want you to be like that only. Thank you very much. God bless all of you.